Hello everyone, this is a short video on the Penwalker robot toys I recently designed in Fusion 360. They're uh, inspired by the type of robot that Robot Hut makes. He has a YouTube channel and a Thingiverse account. First I'll show them walking. They have a switch built into them. You pull the switch up and they start. Pushing the switch down uh, stops them. The switch is a not a commercial switch. It's designed into the head. There are two CR2032 cells in the head that power the small N20 gearhead motor. It's a 100 RPM motor. It's, uh, I'll take it apart in a minute and show you the motor and the internal workings. I designed the uh, robot to be small and simple to build and with commonly available parts, hopefully. Uh, the switch is just 3D printed parts and a contactor made from a paper clip. A motor you can get on Banggood or eBay. I'll disassemble one now and show you what's inside. Oh, this is what's inside the, uh, the toy. This is the N20 gear motor that drives this 10 tooth gear. This is also a 10 tooth gear that makes up the crank for this pin. This is the pin that is referred to in the term pin walker. It's also connected through this either 1 8 or 3 millimeter shaft to this crank over here. You'll notice that these posts are 180 degrees apart, so when one is all the way up, this one's all the way down. It also has a little added action in the arms. They have little pins made of uh, 1.75 filament that are just stuck in there that drive the arms back and forth as this crank moves back and forth. Uh, I'll turn it on and let you see it with its You can also see that there are LEDs up here in the head. The LEDs are wired in series with a, a one current limiting resistor. I'll take the head apart in a minute and show you the construction of a, of a battery box switch assembly. But the two legs are just glued on. If you ever, if you were to decide to build one, you'll have to take notice that uh, there's a notch that goes on the inside because the sl the slot is off center for the pin. That's to give more room between the motor and the pin. Right now, I'll take the arms off first. They're just held on by two short screws with a washer. There you can see the filament, but uh, I just pressed that in with pliers. It's just normal 3D printing filament and trimmed it off to about the approximate length. After you get the arms off, this is a the motor clamp. It's what clamps down on the motor and also holds the shaft in place. I'll take that off next. You could use two screws when you assemble it, but I've just got one. It seems to hold it. Take that off and the clamp will come off and you can see the N20 motor and the... This, this one is built with an 8 inch shaft, but a 3 millimeter shaft would also work. There's a only a few thousandths of an inch difference. There is a washer here and here that helps keep things working a little bit freer. I'm going to pull this. When you assemble it, you put this whole crank assembly in as one unit. And I'll disassemble it the same way. It just 
pulls out just like that. That's the way you put it back together too. The motor will come out. This this gear is on pretty lightly. You can just pull it up by your hand. You can take the head off and the motor will go through the hole. This gives us uh, all the electronics in one one spot. Turn it on, you see the lights come on and the motor turning. One thing, when you assemble this, make sure that the motor turns clockwise, looking at it from this end. I'll go ahead and take the, uh, take the head apart even farther. There's just one screw, it's a two millimeter by, I believe, six millimeter. You just use whatever you got. I've got a little piece of tape on here now to make it a little tighter. This one come out a little bit tighter fit than this one did. Uh, you could also just glue this bottom part onto the main frame. That would You would still be able to assemble it and disassemble it as the motor will go through that hole. I'll show you that in just a second. Take the bottom part off. The motor will go through a hole. And inside we have two LEDs up here with a current limiting resistor and uh, this is the switch assembly with the two CR2032 cells. To disassemble it, take the switch assembly out first. It's not in there, it fits in a pocket, it's not in there very tight. After you do that you can Poke the LEDs out. And then we have the, all the electronics and uh, the switch. This is a little switch I designed. It has a slider. You pull it out, and this contactor will make contact with the switches or with the uh, batteries. Push it in, and it breaks the contact. This contactor is just a number one paper clip bent using a jig that I provided in the STL files for bending it. So it's not too bad of a problem to bend it. There's also a, there's also a paper clip. I'll just take the batteries out and show you. You can poke them out from the back. There's also a paper clip uh, wire right down here that forms the contactor for the negative. This is the positive up here. Or I believe you could put them in there backwards. It would just run backwards. Of course, the LEDs wouldn't work. But you can see the slider is a has a dovetail joint on it. Works pretty well. I'm not saying it would withstand a thousand cycles, but it works okay. To put it back together, you just put put the batteries in there with the flat side up like this. Push them in there. Let's see if it still works. And it does. Assembling it is just the reverse of what I, I just showed you disassembling. First you put the LEDs in. If I can do this. Press them up against the, as far as they'll go. And you put the uh, switch in. The slider, when you push it in, it's constrained by part of the switch, the blue part of the switch. When you pull it out, it's constrained by a pocket in the head. So you just slide the slider up through that hole and then it's just a matter of pushing it all the way down in there, making sure you don't have any shorts between the wires. It's a close fit, but haven't had any problems so far. Then put, uh, put the base back on. 
I'll just screw around here somewhere. I believe it's a six millimeter long by two millimeter screw. Finding the screws for the stuff seems to be one of the hardest parts. And to put it back together, slide the motor down, put the head in there. Now you have to slide the, this assembly in. Well, first you have to put the gear on. Slide the crank assembly in, making sure you have these washers all the way over to the sides. It's probably easiest with those you know, those pliers. There are angles on the pins but go into the legs, just they barely clear. Yeah, I messed up there. Just like that. And put the clamp, the clamp, it's got a half cut out for the shaft at the top. Move it over where it's about, the motor where it's about even with the plastic edge. And then a screw, a three millimeter by probably uh, at least 12 millimeter screw. It should run now. Then it's just a matter of putting the arms back on. Don't use too long of a screw to put the arm in or it will interfere with a crank up here. Make sure that those little filament pins straddle the, the pin here. This should be free. The motor, the batteries don't provide much current. So it's important that everything work freely. The motor doesn't draw a lot of current, but tighten them up and then back them off till they till they move free. It's all kind of loose, but it works. Then it's just a matter of uh, putting the front panel back on. I haven't showed you the back yet. It's got some designs like doors and fans and vents on it. The front has some designs like a tape machine. I think this is a Frankenstein switch I put on there. It's like an X and Y meter or something like that. And some vents, just various doodads. Here it is back together. I've screwed the front plate back on. One thing about the uh, using these small battery cells, the 2032s are really not meant for as high a current an application as this. You can you may be able to see it on this one. This was the, the one of it I did all of the uh, original building and development on, and uh, it's probably ran for 15 minutes in whole, and. Uh, LEDs have a forward voltage of 1.8 volts. After it runs uh, a few seconds, you may see the LED start to blink or look like they're blinking. That's because the voltage drops and uh, causes the LEDs to, to uh, dim. If I load it, they will even go out. That's because the the batteries are getting older and or well they're more been more used up. Uh, but if you turn it off for a few seconds and turn it back on, it takes off again. This one has fairly fresh batteries and it uh, works fine. So this is probably not a toy you could expect to run for an hour or so on these batteries. But if you just want something to set on your desk and 
operate every once in a while. It's just fine. I'll provide a slideshow at the end of this video uh, showing the build sequence for building the switch. Uh, it uses a little jig for bending that contact. You know, it, the slideshow will show how to do that. Uh, the, all the STL files will be on Thingiverse. I'll probably release with Fusion 360 files at some point. Uh, I may want to clean them up a little first and organize them a little better. But uh, if you build one, it's a fun little project to build. It's uh, not very tall. I believe I measured it. At, oh, here's a scale. It's only four and a half inches tall by uh, two and three quarters wide. About you know, one and a quarter, one and a half inches deep at most. Well, thank you.